If you are actually not able to understand a particular line in a documentation or the instruction manual, it is actually the mistake of the organization and not you. Because at the end of the day, the main aim is to make things as simple as possible for anyone and everyone to learn. Hey everyone, my name is Kunal Verma and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. I'm super excited for this one because, you know, often folks ask me in the community, Hey Kunal, how can I get started with open source? And I'm not actually able to find a starting point, you know, to get involved in. Now, although there are a lot of opportunities out there, but for someone who is just starting out, it can get really overwhelming and I completely get it. Now, as a fellow community member, I do believe that I play a role in making you aware of all the vast opportunities that are out there in open source and that you can get involved in. Now today we have one such amazing opportunity for all the open source enthusiasts out there and it's actually related to the CNCF community. And don't worry at all if you are not aware about the CNCF community because we'll be covering that part in this video only. By the end of the video, I do feel that you'll be pretty confident in making your first contributions into open source and get involved in the community. Now before we jump right into the video, make sure to share this with your friends so that they don't miss out on this amazing opportunity and they can also start their open source journey along with you. Yeah, so let's jump right into it. Now, let us start from the very first question that we have here. That is, what exactly is CNCF? Now, the full form of CNCF is Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So it is actually a community which is a home to a lot of amazing open source projects that are out there. Now, simply speaking, it acts as an umbrella for a lot of companies and open source projects that are out there that fall under the cloud native ecosystem. So this is actually the main website of the CNCF community, which is cncf.io. You can definitely check that out. Now, as you can see, the cloud native computing foundations actually serves as the vendor neutral home for many fast growing open source projects such as Kubernetes, Prometheus, and Envoy. Now, if you are someone who's involved in the community for a long time, you would have definitely heard of the terms like Kubernetes, Litmus Chaos, Chaos Engineering, Service Meshes, so these are some of the names of the projects that actually fall under the CNCF community and all of them are actually involved in the DevOps and the cloud ecosystem. Now the CNCF community is actually spread across the world and these numbers, you know, justify this particular fact. So we total have 100k plus contributors, 7.5 million plus contributions and 187 plus countries. So you can definitely see the power of this particular organization. Now, as these technologies are growing more and more, many large scale companies are actually adopting this particular ecosystem in their organizations as well. So you will definitely see that we actually need more contributors in order to improve these solutions as the time goes. So there are a lot of information that is given out there. So you can definitely check that out. So there are actually, you know, the end users community that actually, you know, use these particular technologies in their organizations. So this is some information about them. Then there are the amazing contributors that actually contribute to these amazing projects and make them better each day. Now there are actually core members as well in the CNCF community. So you can definitely check them out. If you're interested, you can apply for the a member as well now if we see you know the total stats of the projects as well so there are 16 graduated projects 27 incubating projects 70 sandbox projects now the terms like sandbox incubating and the graduated ones these are the terms that is used to define on what stage is the project actually in this particular community so first one is the sandbox stage when the project enters into the cncf community the next one would be the incubating stage and the next one is the graduating stage so the graduated projects now the next come the cncf landscape and it is landscape.cncf.io you can definitely check that out as well but this is basically you know every project that is involved in the cncf ecosystem is listed in this particular website so we have different categories here such as databases streaming and messaging there is scheduling and orchestration there is service proxy api gateway service meshes there are a lot of projects that are out there and this particular landscape can you know get really overwhelming for someone who's just viewing it for the first time if you are actually involved in the cncf community for a long time you would definitely know that this is actually called as the overwhelming landscape because there is a lot out there and this can get really confusing for someone who's just viewing it for the first time so if you want to explore more you can definitely go through this particular landscape this actually lists all the projects that are involved in the community so you can definitely check those out you can actually take this as a big picture to know the all the projects that are involved here now we'll not be talking about these technical concepts right now maybe i can make some other video on this particular topic now this video is actually more focused towards the non-technical and non-coding side of the things so you can definitely get involved as soon as you watch this particular video now one such opportunity that is out there for you all to actually get involved in the cncf community is the cloud native glossary and we'll be talking about how you can get involved in in this particular initiative and how you can start your contributions right away 
Now, what do you mean by a glossary? Now, glossary is actually a collection of terms that are you know interrelated to each other in a particular way. So, for example, if we talk about the cloud native glossary itself, it is actually a collection of all the terms that are related to the cloud native ecosystem. For example, we have terms like containerization, containers, Kubernetes, DevOps, you know, infrastructure as code. There are a lot of terms that are out there and the cloud native glossary is actually a collection of all these terms. So now you'll be asking what exactly is the use of this project? Now, for example, if you're someone who's new to this community and you're just curious to know what exactly does Kubernetes mean and in a really short manner, right? So you can just come into this cloud native glossary and you can search the term Kubernetes here and there we go. And now we are actually able to get a definition of what exactly does Kubernetes mean. So Kubernetes, often abbreviated as K8, is a popular open source tool for modern infrastructure automation. Now Kubernetes is actually really large and a complex open source project. It's actually the second largest open source project in the world. And to summarize that amount of complexity in some four to five paragraphs, this is a difficult task. And here comes the cloud native glossary in handy. So it explains basically what exactly the technology is, the problem it addresses, so what exactly used to happen previously and how does Kubernetes addresses to that particular problems. And then it actually explains how that particular technology addresses to that particular problem. Now you can definitely see here that there are a lot of terms that has already been added to this particular glossary. So you can definitely check these terms out and these actually really come in handy if you want to explain to someone what exactly is a particular technology in a really short manner. So the cloud native glossary is actually an open source project. So this actually helps a lot in keeping things up to date, you know, constantly changing the definitions, adding new terms in here, because at the end of the day, open source is all about collaboration and bringing the community together to improve a particular project or the organization. Now let us talk about how actually you can get involved in this particular project and can start your contributions right away. Now the very first step would be joining the CNCF Slack community. The link for that you can find on the main website as well. Now in that there is a channel called as the glossary channel. So if you're interested in contributing to the glossary, I would definitely recommend you joining that particular channel. Say hi, introduce yourself, and let us know what you're interested in contributing to. Now that you have joined this channel, you'll definitely be getting constant updates related to this particular initiative. You can ask your doubts anytime that you want and the community is always there for help. Now the second step would be to understand this particular project in order to contribute. Now there is actually a style guide that has been made for you all in order to understand the workflow of the whole project. So let us see that. Now in order for you to actually contribute a particular term to the glossary, it is really important for you to understand what is the workflow that is being followed and some important instructions that is being given in the style guide. So the main aim of this particular style guide is to let you know what is actually the defined style that is being used in all these terms that are out there in this particular glossary. And that would actually help us to maintain a consistent style while you're contributing. So you can definitely go through this particular style guide. It actually lays down some key aspects that are important for you to understand. For example, the audience that we'll be addressing. If you want to actually add a new term or a new definition to this particular glossary, you definitely want to check that out the definition template that has been made for you, which follows a definite pattern. For example, the particular term, what is it? the problem it addresses and how it helps. This actually helps to maintain a consistent style in all the terms that have been listed out there. So you can definitely go through all these particular key concepts that have been mentioned here. Now, one of the key things we are actually focusing on while contributing to this particular initiative is that keeping the things simple. Now, as I mentioned previously as well, the main aim of the glossary is to actually explain complex cloud native terms in simple words. And that is indeed a difficult task. So here are some of the tips and the suggestions that have been laid out for you all in order to make things simple when you are actually trying to construct a particular definition for a term. So actually giving real world examples, doing multiple revisions because as I mentioned, the task of actually explaining complex concepts in simple words is a difficult one. So you would definitely need multiple revisions. I would not actually go much into the detail of each and every point. You can most definitely check them out and I would definitely recommend everyone to check this out if you're interested in contributing before directly jumping on to the contribution part. Now that you have understood what is the style that is being followed and the workflow that is being followed in this particular project, you are actually ready to contribute in it. So there are mainly three ways one can actually contribute to the cloud native glossary. The first one is actually you are proposing a new term to be added. So for someone who's been working in the industry and you think that you can explain a particular term in a really simple manner, you're most welcome to propose a new term to be added in the glossary. So here you can actually find the step-by-step -step guide that is being followed in order for you to propose a new term. 
You can definitely go through all these steps, but I can just quickly show you on GitHub what this might look like. So this is actually the GitHub repository for the CNCF glossary, and you will definitely be needing this if you want to contribute to the project. So now coming on to the part of proposing a new term. So for that, the very first step would be creating a new issue. So if you just come into the issues tab, you can create a new issue from here. And if you actually want to contribute in any other language, you can definitely select any language that you are comfortable with the list that is given here. For now, let us select the language as English. Now here is a basic template that has been created for you all if you want to propose a new term. So you can add your new term here, you can give some additional details if you want and you can just simply create an issue. So now creating an issue is basically you know you are proposing a particular new term to the cloud native glossary. Now in order for you to actually add the definition for that particular term you'll actually need to create a new PR for that. If we just quickly go back to the contributing guide. So as you can see, here are the instructions for creating a PR. So you can definitely check that out as well. The file system that is being followed in the glossary is pretty simple. So you will definitely get the hang of it when you start contributing. So you can definitely go through these steps and check out how you can actually propose a new term and make a PR for that as well. Now I'm actually not explaining each and every step in detail because that would make video quite long. But if you actually want a definite video on this particular topic like setting up this project on a local system and actually contributing to it using Git and GitHub, you can definitely comment that idea in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to make a video on this particular topic if you all are interested. Now another interesting way in which you can contribute to the glossary is actually updating an existing term. So if you are someone who is just going through a particular term and you feel that that particular line can be explained in a much better way, you can definitely raise an issue for improving that particular term and give your suggestion and ideas for the same. Now it is actually really simple if you want to make a change in the existing definition. So for example if the term is containerization and you see that this particular line for example doesn't make sense or you can actually improve this line by sharing your thoughts and ideas. So you can directly hit the edit this page button. This will actually navigate you to that particular term on GitHub itself so it would actually make it easy for you to directly contribute and make your suggestions in this particular term here one thing i would like to point out here is that even if you are making a change in the existing definition it is always a good practice to fork that particular project and set up in your local system to make that particular change rather than directly changing it on the main branch this is actually good practice that is followed in open source and if you're someone who's just starting out I would definitely suggest you to follow this particular practice in each contribution that you make in this particular project and any other open source project in the ecosystem. Now one would definitely have a question in mind like, hey Kunal, I'm just a beginner in this particular domain. How can I actually contribute to such complex definitions if I don't know the particular term? Yeah, it's a pretty valid question and actually that's the beauty of open source. If you're someone who's just starting out and you know actually learning about these particular technologies, you can still contribute because each contributor in a particular organization sees everything with a fresh pair of eyes. So even if you're a beginner out there who's just learning about that particular technology, you'll definitely be able to provide a fresh new perspective to the particular definition and you can definitely suggest more changes or ideas that comes to your mind because at the end of the day the main aim of the glossary is to make things simple for you all right there is actually a line that Eddie Jowd an amazing community member always says that if you are actually not able to understand a particular line in a documentation or the instruction manual it is actually the mistake of the organization and not you because at the end of the day the main aim is to make things as simple as possible possible for anyone and everyone to learn. Now here actually comes the most interesting part of the project and an amazing way for you to get involved. I'll actually clap two times for you to pay attention to this particular part. Now nevertheless your technical background whether you have that particular amount of coding experience or not whether you are you know proficient in particular technology you can still get involved in contributing to the cloud native glossary through this particular initiative that we have. Now as this project is part of the CNCF community, we actually believe that language shouldn't be a barrier for anyone to learn, right? So in order for this particular project to reach each and every part of the world and in order to help people around who might not have English as their native language, the localization counts as a really important aspect of this particular project. Now if you are someone who is actually interested in helping us translate this glossary into your own native language, that could be Hindi, German, Bengali, any other languages that are, that are out there. If you are interested in you know, contributing to that, jump into the CNCF Slack channel and there is actually a special glossary localization channel that you can join and let us know what you would like to contribute in. Now currently we have a few established teams that have already started localizing the cloud native glossary. So right now we have a team for Hindi, we have also a team for German, Portuguese and there are a few other languages as well. So if you are interested in contributing to this particular initiative, you can either join an existing team 
or you can also create a new one so for example if you are proficient in a particular language say for example bengali you can definitely start your own team as well and help us in localizing in that particular language as well there are a few important instructions for you to follow if you are actually proposing a new team the localization guide will definitely help you here if you want to know more about how you can set up your own team you can contribute in either ways but it is really important for you to first join in the glossy localization slack channel there are actually a lot of amazing community members that are already a part of this initiative so they will definitely help you and guide you if you want to get started. If you want to know more about how you can get involved in the Glossary initiative, if you have any other ideas or suggestions or thoughts related to this, you can most definitely join the monthly Glossary group meeting and present your ideas there. And you will also get an opportunity to interact with the maintainers of the project as well. Now this was all about the Cloud Native Glossary and I hope you got a nice overview on how to get started and how you can get involved. Now for some of those who's viewing this for the first time, you could definitely have some doubts at the back of your mind that whether I can contribute or whether I can get involved in the community or not. And don't worry at all, I completely get it. So to address this particular topic and welcome you all to contribute to this particular initiative, we have an amazing community member and the project maintainer Catherine Paganini with us and I hope she would definitely agree with me on that point that anyone can contribute to this particular initiative. So Catherine, over to you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Catherine and one of the maintainers of the Cloud Native Glossary. As Kunal mentioned, the Glossary is a CNCF project that doesn't require coding. That makes it a really, really get, a great way to get started with open source and become part of this amazing community. Because explaining complex Cloud Native terms and simple uh, simple words is actually quite hard. It's also a great way to test and deepen your cloud native knowledge. If this sounds interesting, join us. You can contribute new terms, improve existing one, or translate the glossary into your native language. Just hop on the Slack and say hi. We look forward to seeing you there. Bye bye. Thank you so much for sharing, Catherine. And I hope that the message that anyone and everyone can contribute was very well received by everyone. Yeah, that's all for today. If you want to connect with me or Catherine to know more about the initiative, link to all the social media accounts are in the description box down below. So you can definitely check them out. Feel free to jump into the CSCS Slack channel and the Glossary Localization channel as well. If you're interested in contributing, say hi, introduce yourself and let us know what you're interested in contributing to. Do remember, it is always about taking the first step if you want to get involved in any open source opportunity if you like this video make sure to give it a like subscribe to the channel share it with your friends on linkedin twitter instagram anywhere you want in order to raise awareness about the vast opportunities that open source actually holds so that's all for today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye